Hello everyone, my name is Gali, I'm a EKRA Dorogy Doctor in Training. In this video I'm going to cover how elbow x-rays are taken, quick anatomy recap, suggested checklist and some examples. I'll create a separate video for pediatric elbow and you can skip to the section you want from the timeline. Please visit the Radiopedia link for more cases as a quiz. So let's start. The most common elbow radiographic positions are anterior posterior in full extension, electro, and then external oblique in some institutions, which provides really good views to the radial head. This is the humerus, olecranon fossa, capitellum, radial head, coronoid process of ulna, and trochlea. This is the medial side, which is the ulna side. This is the lateral side, radial side. This is the olecranon fossa again. That's the olecranon. This is the coronoid process. This is the coronoid fossa. This is the radial head and neck. That's the ulna. That's the radial tubercle where the biceps tendon inserts. You can see how the coronoid fossa is shallower than the olecranon fossa. There are pads of fat close to the distal humerus, anteriorly and posteriorly. The anterior fat pad is seen in most, but not all, normal elbows. The posterior fat pad is not visible on a normal radiograph because it's situated deep within the olecranon fossa. If visible, then a fracture is highly probable. On a normal lateral radiograph, a line drawn along the long axis of the proximal 2 to 3 cm of the long shaft of the radius should pass through the capitellum. If this is not the case, then there's a dislocation, most probably of the radial head. A line traced along the anterior cortex of the humerus should have at least one third of the capitellum anterior to it. If this is not the case, then there is a strong suspicion of a supracondylar fracture. This is more relevant in the pediatric setting. Once I looked at the soft tissue and alignment, I traced the bones. In the adult, a fracture of the head or neck of the radius represents 50% of all fractures at the elbow. Less commonly, fracture of the olecranon represents 10 to 20%. X-ray of the left elbow demonstrated prominent anterior fat pad sail sign, with posterior fat pad also visible. This is consistent with a large joint effusion. No definite fracture can be seen, although the radial head appears a little ill-defined laterally. This is the most common site of fractures in this scenario. Repeat x-ray one week later shows a thin, ill-defined sclerotic line along the neck of the radius. This case illustrates the utility of repeat x-rays in the setting of suspected but radiographically occult fractures. This is a sagittal proton density fat suppress sequence showing a non-displaced intraarticular radial head fracture and an elbow joint effusion. So on this fat suppress sequence, you can still see fluid so that's the radial head fracture which is intraarticular and depressed surrounded by edema and as we scroll we see the joint effusion elevating the anterior as well as the posterior fat pads such as in here so that's the anterior fat pad that's elevated and that's the posterior fat pad Minimally displaced neck of radius fracture, which does not involve the articular surface. This is associated with elevation of the anterior fat pad, sail sign. As a patient who fell on outstretched hand, anterior humeral and radial capitella lines are normal and no elbow dislocation can be seen. Evolution fracture fragment projecting superior to the radial head on the lateral view and closely related to the lateral epicondyle on the AP view. Elevated anterior and posterior fat pads. This is a 3D reconstruction of the injury. Fracture through the radial neck is demonstrated without convincing involvement of the articular surface. There are elevated anterior and posterior fat pads. Complete intraarticular fracture through the olecranon with minimal displacement of the fracture fragment. This is associated with joint diffusion. This case highlights the importance of two views. The fracture can be missed on the AP view. Oblique fracture of the proximal ulna with displacement and angulation. Humeral ulna alignment is maintained. The radial head is dislocated posteriorly. Marks of tissue swelling. 
Injury pattern is in keeping with the Montegia fracture dislocation. This is another case of Montegia fracture dislocation. There is a comminuted fracture of the mid diaphysis of the ulna. The radio head is dislocated anteriorly. Overlying cast material is noted. This case shows an uncomplicated posterior dislocation of the elbow. As you know, we name the dislocation according to the distal side that's dislocated. In this case, this is the ulna that has dislocated posteriorly. Therefore, this is a posterior dislocation and it's uncomplicated. There's another case of posterior elbow dislocation, complicated by a fractured coronoid process. We see those multiple small fractured fragments. Thank you guys for watching. Please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys later.